Uh, hello and welcome everyone to the Lexigen and Bluebee webinar. I'm Yekaterina Alexeyeva, Senior Marketing Manager at Lexigen, uh, and I will be moderating this webinar today. Uh, the title of our webinar is Lexigen Coral Total RNA Seq Complete Solution for Whole Transcriptome Analysis. This webinar will take about 45 minutes, including 30 minutes of presentations and 15 minutes uh, for Q&A session. Uh, let me introduce uh, the speakers and the talks topics for today. The first talk will be by Lexigen uh, product manager Martina Sauer. She will give an overview of the Lexigen's Coral Total RNA-Seq Library Prep Kit. In the second talk, Bluebee's uh, field application scientist Andreas Kligenhoff will present the Bluebee Genomics Platform and uh, an overview of the Coral Pipeline on it. Afterwards, uh, we will have a Q&A session and we invite you to submit your questions by typing them in the question box, which you can find on the right panel of the webinar software under the quote sign with a question mark in it. Feel free to type in your questions during or after the talks. However, please be aware we will only answer them after the talks during the actual Q&A session. We will try to answer as many questions as possible, as long as the time permits. And now it's my pleasure to turn it over to Martina for the first short talk. Uh, Martina, welcome and please go ahead. So thank you, Yekaterina, for the kind introduction and also a very warm thank you to Bluebee and all the organizers on the Bluebee side for this webinar. It is my big pleasure to introduce you all uh, to Lexogen's new COAL Total RNA-Seq Library Prep Kit uh, to its features and also to give you an idea of the data analysis pipeline that our scientists have developed for COAL and that is now available on Bluebe as Andreas will later on describe in more detail. Before we begin, I want to uh, give you a brief introduction about Lexigen, who we are, what we do. Uh, so Lexigen is committed to develop and to deliver end-to-end -end solutions for RNA sequencing. Uh, we are founded and our headquarters is based in Vienna, Austria. Uh, we are a very multinational team and we also have a subsidiary in the US, in New Hampshire, uh, where we also have uh, sales representatives and uh, tech support as well as we have them here in Vienna. Also, we have a worldwide distributor network, which you can also find on our website. So as here, Katerina has already introduced, today's talk will be about coal. As I mentioned earlier, Lexigen is committed to providing end-to-end -end solutions for RNA sequencing. Um, I have here depicted the RNA sequencing pipeline, which starts from sampling of your material to sample preparation, sequencing, and finally the data analysis. Today, we also only focus on two of those parts that are covered in this talk, the sample preparation and the data analysis. Uh, today, we will talk about the whole transcriptome uh, sample preparation kit call and the corresponding data analysis pipeline, which is implemented in Bluebee, and Andreas Klingenhoff will guide you uh, through that later on a bit more. So now I want to jump straight into COAL. So as I said, COAL is a whole transcriptome RNA sequencing library prep kit, and COAL delivers complete transcript coverage from start to end. It is a extremely fast and easy library prep protocol and all components that you require for the library preparation are included in the kit. COAL is also suitable for low input and for FFPE samples. We have uh, benchmarked COAL's performance to most commonly used library prep uh, kits currently available on the market. And our focus of today's talk will be the data analysis pipeline that is available on Bluebee. So 
Before going into some data about coal and its performance, I want to give you an introduction about how the chemistry of the coal library preparation works. So first of all, you have to know that coal is an RNA fragmentation free protocol. So in contrast to most other library prep kits on the market, we do not start by fragmenting the RNA, but we leave them as intact as it can be. This um, minimizes the bias by physical RNA fragmentation. Uh, the insert size in your final libraries is defined by the distance between the random primers that we use. We use the so-called strand displacement stop primers that randomly hybridize to your RNA template and the reverse transcriptase will perform the reverse transcription until this uh, first strand uh, synthesis hits the next displacement stop primer and this will define the length of the final uh, insert of your libraries. In a second step, we ligate the uh, linker oligo that already contains the UMI, the unique molecular identifiers, very efficiently to the three prime end of the first strand uh, cDNA. And via this mechanism, you result in these short fragments that contain the UMI and the inserts. This way also maintains the strandedness of your RNA. And all these selectogen proprietary steps together result in a complete transcript coverage. On the next slide, I want to show you how this complete transcript coverage looks like on an endogenous gene. Uh, here I show you an example of GAPDH, so a very well-known housekeeping gene. And as you can appreciate here that uh, compared to um, commonly used kits currently on the market, we have uh, also very nice, very complete transcript coverage over the whole uh, um, entrance structure. What you can also appreciate when you zoom in to the very three prime end here, you can see that the, the reads generated by the coral library prep kit cover the whole transcript to the very five prime end of the transcript, whereas other methods tend to not really reach those last couple of nucleotides. Also, you can appreciate on the other end, the three prime end, this transcription is stop site, that also here the coverage of coal is more complete. Um, also here on this slide, you can uh, see that is a difference of a whole transcriptome library prep kit to merely quantitative methods such as lexogens quantseq, three prime mRNA seq, or microRNAs, where you just obtain quantitative information of your data. With COAL, you obtain the quantitative and also qualitative uh, data from your RNA samples, which allows you also to assess isoform uh, discovery or isoform quantification, but also it would allow you to, for example, re-annotate transcriptional start and transcriptional end size. And you can also use a call for re annotate uh, for de novo assembly of transcripts. On the next slide, I want to point out that we do not do any cherry picking here when I show you an endogenous gene. We have done this analysis of the five prime and three prime ends on the ERCC controls. So ERCCs are spike in controls that have known transcriptional starts and end sites. And when we align all the known transcriptional start sites of the ERCCs and align all ERCC reads to this very five prime end, you can really see that they accumulate on a nucleotide resolution accurately to the very known start site of the ERCC. And the same is true for the three prime end, where the coverage is more intense than for other kits currently available on the market. Another feature of coal that is very much appreciated by our customers is that it's a fast and easy and all-in-one library prep protocol. 
So it only takes you 4.5 hours to generate libraries from your starting material. The protocol is endorsed for its very easy workflows, even if you have not too much experience in the lab. If you follow our detailed user guide, you are able to generate uh, reproducible libraries. And also the components are all included and you do not need any additional time to incorporate some add-ons, for example, such as dual indexing. The input requirements for coal are extremely flexible. You can go down to one nanogram of input total RNA as input into the ribosomal RNA depletion or mRNA enrichment with our KITS ribocorp or poly A selection. If you already have pre-enriched RNA, uh, you can even go down to 100 picogram of input. Also, our coal protocol is compatible with low quality samples such as FFPE, as I will point out later. Coal is also high, highly cost efficient. So all the required components included, for example, we have included the UMIs, the unique molecular identifiers, the I7 indices that you usually have to buy separately from other suppliers. Also the purification beads are already included. The whole protocol is very automation friendly. So if you want to automate coal, you can use the kit as we send it to you. Um, it is very easy to automate on liquid handles. You do not need any additional kits for automation. And we here at Lexogen have also very close collaboration with the manufacturers of liquid handlers and can help you out with providing protocols for those machines. And last but not least, data analysis is available on the Blue Bee Genomics platform, as we will talk about later. So I mentioned that the coal library prep is suitable for low input and for FFPE samples. So let's start with the low input material. As you can see here on this uh, gene discovery plot that we have performed on different input material from one nanogram to 10 and 100 nanogram input into RNA depletion and subsequent coal library prep. And you can see that uh, gene detection rate is almost as efficient when you use one nanogram input as when you use 10 nanogram or 100 nanogram input. So it's very robust and very reproducible among the input scale. The very same is true for using FFPE samples, so formerly paraffin um, embedded samples. Here you can also appreciate an almost equal gene detection rate from FFPE and fresh frozen material. And if we further analyze uh, that data, you can also see that the overlap of genes detected uh, from both kinds of material is very large, about 90%. So you can use FFPE material almost as good as fresh material. And last but not least, you want to know how coal performs uh, in comparison to other kits on the market. So, of course, we have benchmarked coal's performance to the most commonly used kits that's, that are available. And on this gene discovery plot here again, you can appreciate that coal has an efficient gene discovery rate as currently most frequently used kits on the market. And also in terms of the actual data that comes out, you can see here that 96% of the commonly detected genes overlap between coal and each of the analyzed competitors. So this uh, very nicely illustrates that you can interchange uh, coal library prep with other whole transcriptome RNA-seq library preps currently available. Now, one more point that is a bit different between coal and other kits on the market. We also provide you with a data analysis pipeline because we know that data analysis is actually in the end the major part of your whole experiment and we want to support our customers. 
uh, and we have invested a lot of research uh, and development into our data analysis pipeline. So the pipeline that is now implemented in Bluebe and available for you performs for you the read quality control, the mapping, the UMI deduplication, and most importantly, it provides you uh, with a reliable transcript trans quantification. For this transcript quantification, we use mixed square. Mixed square is a uh, lexicon's proprietary um, software that is now embedded in this pipeline. Mixed square does precise transcript abundance estimation, thus will lead to an accurate detection of differential gene expression in downstream uh, DESEC experiments, for example. Mixed square provides an exceptional reproducibility across variable sample conditions. And also very important, it has fast one times and small memory footprint. So in the next couple of slides, I just want to give a very rough introduction into mixed square, why we choose it and what it does. So in terms of quantitative transcript abundance estimation, most algorithms that are available um, assume, uh, assume a very equal uh, coverage across the gene, but that is usually not the case. Sometimes you have a bias, in this case, for example, on the five prime end, and most uh, methods to estimate transcripts abundance cannot really deal with these kind of biases. What mixed square does, it mixes um, a mixture model to the data and that results in that mixed square can learn isoform specific bias from the reads that you have seen in your RNAC experiment. If you want to know more about mixed square itself, you're welcome to visit our website. There's a lot of data on mixed square, how it performs and how it has been developed. Mixed square is the published uh, pipeline we have published a couple of years ago, so you can go into depth there. So now we come to the reason why we use mixed square. Many customers want to do um, differential expression analysis after they have estimated the transcript and isoform abundances. And here I show you an experiment of RNA isolated from blood from two different donors. And we have performed a library prep with Ribocop, our RNA depletion and subsequent call library prep. We have done this in uh, various numbers of technical replicates. And after using either mixed square on this side or a string tie for transcript abundance estimation, we have performed a differential expression analysis using the ESIC and analyze uh, those results on a PCA plot, a principal component analysis. So in this case, the principal component that is responsible for the largest variance is the biological source. In this case, it's the donor. And as you can see here, when we do this PCA analysis on string tie data, you cannot really see a particular clustering. The only clustering that you might be able to see is more into the replicates that we have been doing than specifically to the donor. On the other hand, when we use mixed square for transcript estimations and subsequent DE-seq for the differential expression analysis, the two different donors very nicely cluster on this uh, principal component analysis. So this is why we have decided to use mixed square on the pipeline, which is implemented on Bluebe to give you really the best outcome. So this just sums it up. Mixed square for complete transcript, transcript coverage, fast benchmark performance and suitable for FFPE samples. And for the data analysis on Bluebe, I will now hand over to Andreas Klingenhoff, who will tell you more about the Bluebe pipeline and what the pipeline does for coal. Yeah, thank you, yeah, Katharina. Thank you, Martina, for the kind introduction. Um, and this 
second part, uh, I will give you a short overview of what we, what Luby can do uh, to analyze the data that you are uh, created with the uh, Coral Kits from Lexigen. Um, we will have a short look on, on Bluebee architecture, how we do things, how we deploy our software, how we uh, can guarantee privacy compliance. And at the end, we'll uh, look in more technical details, how the data can be analyzed, how you can register on the platform, and what results you actually get at the end. Um, Bluebee, uh, Bluebee mission, uh, we position ourselves as a partner for uh, companies like Lexigen to provide an ecosystem, an IT infrastructure environment uh, where companies, partners can, can deploy their omics technologies, um, making them accessible to their customers in a robust, um, scalable way uh, that they don't have to worry about those more technology in the background. That's the part Bluebee takes care of. Um, as already mentioned, so direct B2B business uh, where we provide the uh, IT infrastructure to our partners uh, with on top of the IT, a simple to use user interface uh, that makes it for you as an end user um, easy to work and, and, and to analyze your data. Um, our partners own the IP, the solutions. So it is software IP technology, in this case, developed by Lexigen. Um, so you don't have, or you can be sure, you can rely on that the pipelines we use, that you use to analyze your data really reflects the, the IP developed, the science developed by the partner you actually work with, the kids you use. And another important point, the data that you uh, upload to Bluebee platform stays your data. Uh, Bluebee never claims any rights on the data. We will never access your data or make use of it. Uh, you have the option, of course, to share your data uh, with Lexogen for joint research projects, for, for uh, support questions. Uh, you can, of course, also give us access to the data if there might be some technical issues and we need to look into it, but you stay under control of the data. It stays your data. It's always an opt-in solution. You have to give us, you have to give Lexogen access to the data. Um, the setup with Lexigen is a slightly diff different view on it, actually, again. So we serve Lexigen to, to enable solutions like Coral. It's the three, uh, third pipeline uh, that we bring to the market together. Uh, we have already there um, the Quantic and the Slamdunk pipelines. Um, it is a ready-to-go infrastructure for Lexigen um, to bring their pipelines uh, to you, to your end user, and it's also for you some, some ready to use uh, environment. You just re register, provide your credentials, and then you are ready to go. You don't have to think about uh, investing in, in, in IT resources. Um, you can be sure that the data is uh, safe, stored, compliant. Um, all the things you don't want to take care of if you do uh, analysis like this. Um, how does it look like? A little bit more in detail. So um, you are here as an end user. Uh, you do the experiments, the sample preparations, the sequencing. Um, the data for SQ files gets uploaded uh, to the Bluebee platform. Blueflow, in this case, it's the uh, generic platform uh, where we, for now, host the, the uh, Lexigen pipelines. Data is processed there from FASTQ to here it's VCF. It actually should be BAM files in this case as intermediate files. And then some reports get generated out of it. Can be just transcript counts, gene counts, uh, some, some QC reporting, or even some medical report at the end. End users, you can think of, of, of different scenarios of, of, of end users. Uh, can be for, for clinical use, just wanting to have uh, 
a final reporting for, for decision-driven uh, uh, further actions, uh, or it can be more research-focused, having access to, to all the intermediate files and, and doing some, some local processing research based on that data. That's the situation that we have for now. Um, ah, no, I'll see it from. Um, there is a different layer that we support, which we call Blue Vantage, which is some kind of graphical interface customized for specific applications, um, simplifying the usage of the pipelines, um, just focusing on what really needs to be done, uploading data, starting analysis, uh, and receiving some results, reports, um, taking away, hiding all the technical possibilities, configuration, uh, that you actually have in this layer and that in many cases you don't need if you're just going for, for a clinical reporting. Um, we don't have this yet for Lexigen, but we are working on it. So there will be a Blue Vantage solution um, that integrates uh, the three different uh, Lexigen products that we have already, Quantix, London, and the new Coral one. Uh, it is in development, it will be available early 2020, so early next year. Um, there is another component uh, that might be of interest, um, call it Blue Base. It's some data warehouse database where you can integrate data from a large number of, of, of data sets that you have analyzed, uh, analyzed, can be really resolved, but can also be a lot of QC data, mapping rates uh, that you want to, to analyze, mine, to get a better overview if, if you're working high throughput, how uh, kids, how performance develops over time, over experiment. Um, it's not part of the Lex Lexagen solution yet, but might come to at a later point. Um, if we look in the architecture a little bit more in detail, so we have here on the left side, you actually as an end user, local file system, that's where your data is. And then you interact, so if you log in, create an account, you interact with the uh, Bluebee central platform, which is hosting the, the account information, all the definitions of pipelines, um, data transfer definitions, so how you upload data, uh, ticketing, so all the technical account focused information. It does not contain any of the data that you upload. It does not contain any of the results that you create, no metadata. Those sensitive data, oh, it's not sensitive, but, but those application data stays in one of our regional data centers. So this one is actually located somewhere in Europe, uh, but the, the data centers where your data is, where your data gets analyzed, also the computes uh, happens here. Uh, can be globally everywhere. So it, it's decide, uh, defined where it is. You know where your data stays. For Lexigen, it's also a data center in the EU. But for compliance reasons, we can also define that your data goes uh, somewhere in, or stays somewhere in the US, in the UK, uh, in many other locations. Since this month, uh, we also support our data residency in, in, in mainland China. And again, data is uploaded directly to these uh, regional data centers. The interaction actually is between you and the uh, central platform via browser. Uh, upload is can be done via browser or can be uploaded uh, via connector directly to the regional data center. If we extend the view a little bit globally, so it's actually the same uh, situation again, now you are here as an end user, uh, we have the central platform here, and then there are different data centers globally distributed, and depending on the application, depending on the project, uh, your data can go to different regional data centers, uh, compliant um, data residency is guaranteed, so you know that your data stays in a specific data center, you know in which data center it is, and compute is also done here. So we have regional hardware to analyze the data in those data centers. And only the results are delivered back directly to you, again, bypassing the uh, Bluebee Central platform. Um, 
that brings us to an overview data centers worldwide. Um, this is actually only a subset of, of what we support. We have more than 50 regional data centers uh, we currently have access to. Uh, it's not really worldwide. It has, of course, a, a strong focus on, on, on Northern America, Europe, and, and the uh, Southern Asia Pacific region. Uh, that's where most of the data is created at the moment. Um, we can work with other data centers too. Uh, again, mainland China is actually not on the map yet. We, we have a data center now close to Beijing uh, where we can really host and analyze data in mainland China. Um, we are GDPR compliant, we are ISA compliant, uh, we are HIPAA compliant, we are HDS certified. Uh, a few more of uh, the certificates uh, for different regions uh, in Europe, in North America, uh, Canada, for example. So that's where we put actually quite some effort uh, to, to, to support this uh, data residency and compliance worldwide. That brings us now to Coral, um, the new pipeline on Bluebee platform. Um, give you a short introduction on, on, on how to register on the platform, on, on, on how to, to create, manage projects, um, uploading data, start a run, and what results you actually get at the end. Um, access to the platform. Um, you will get an activation code from Lexagen. Um, that gives you access to the platform and it allows you a specific number of runs defined in the activation code. Um, for, regist for registration, you just go to, to uh, the registration form on our uh, platform, enter the code here, provide you your uh, user information, define a password, and actually then you are set already. It's done in a minute or two. Um, you enter or you create your own specific account with a predefined Coral project inside, uh, which already contains uh, the pipeline. I'll show you a little bit more detail, uh, details on the next slides. Um, if you already have an account, uh, for example, for, for Quantix Lambdong, uh, you can easily add your activation code to those accounts and then manage your data in one account or together from the different applications. But it's not mandatory. Even if you have an account already, you can, of course, also register a new one and keep the coral data somewhere here separate. Um, you're not limited to this one project that's just there to, to make it easy for you so that you can start directly. You have, of course, the opportunity to, to uh, define as many additional projects as you need uh, to manage your data in your account if you want to give uh, different samples to different projects. That's, of course, possible. Inside the project, what do we see? Uh, we have the settings, uh, the general information about the uh, project, project owner, data residency, EU region. Um, you can define if you want to share data between different accounts. You have the possibility to, to give permissions to different users in this account to add adif, uh, additional users to this account. And there is a short, in the default project, a short summary what Coral actually does, how the, how the workflow uh, works. Data upload uh, to the platform. Data upload always goes into a specified project. You have different options uh, to upload data. Most easy one is just browser upload, drag and drop, go into the data uh, section of your project, drop your files here and they get uploaded. Um, you can also install a connector, as already mentioned. Uh, that's a small Java application installed on, on, on your computer, establishing a defined data connection between your server and our cloud. Advantage of a connector is if the upload gets interrupted, especially for larger files that can resume the upload uh, afterwards, and you don't have to start from the beginning again. A uh, third option to get data into your account, into your project, uh, we support cloud connectors. So you can directly connect uh, to, to Amazon, uh, to a luminous base space, or to the Google Cloud, and transfer your data from there to the Bluebee project without having it to download first and re-upload it. 
So that are the different ways to get data into your account. Um, pipeline, you have seen this uh, image already before. It's a pre-configured workflow. Our settings have been optimized by Lexigen, so it's exactly tailored to um, the Coral Kid. Uh, steps, parameters are set that it gives you the optimal results you want to have. Um, at the moment, we support a little bit more than 40 different target species. Um, human, mouse, rat, the most important ones probably. A uh, few model organisms like, like Arabidopsis, Drosophila, zebrafish, few plants, few insects, some very exotic ones. Um, if, nevertheless, your species of interest, your target genome is still missing, reach out to us, reach out to Lexigen, and uh, if the data is freely available, it can be added to the list kind of straightforward. Um, the different steps in the pipeline, so as already mentioned by, by Martina, it starts with uh, UMI sequence removal from the actual read. Uh, then we have some adapter removal, uh, read trimming, removing low quality nucleotides at the five prime, three prime end of the read uh, using catadept for that. Uh, we do some fast QC reports for the input files and for the trimmed files. So you can see the quality differences uh, or actually the quality increase, hopefully, after trimming. Um, then the next step is uh, the star aligner using the defined uh, target genome. Um, outcome BAM file, it is available for you to download. So it's one of the intermediate files you can use. Our uh, next step is uh, the deduplication step using the OMI tags. Um, you also get a deduplicated uh, BAM file also available for, uh, for download. And then the actual quantification step comes with mixed square, uh, which in the end gives you gene abundance, transcript abundance files, and a multi-QC report summarizing all the QC metrics that have been created uh, throughout the analysis. Um, and as already described by Martine, uh, we are currently using Alexigen's mixed square for the transcript quantification. How to start a run? So again, inside your project, you go to pipelines, um, select a pipeline. At the moment, there's only one version, version one. Um, there might be additional versions at a later time. So if uh, we need to update the pipeline because there are newer versions of, of some of the tools available, whatever, uh, we will release a new version. Maybe a few words on, on uh, version management on Bluebee. Um, if we update a pipeline, it will always be a new version. Uh, you will be informed about this, that there is a new version available. And the old versions will stay there. They will still be available for you. So if you need to continue your analysis, um, and still want to use the old one because you started with that, it will still be available. Um, running the pipeline, just hit the start run button. Um, enter input files. Also, as already mentioned, we support single read and paired end. Um, so you either provide one file or you provide read one and read two. Uh, you have to provide a sample ID and select the target species. And then you can just start the run. There's no need to configure anything. You don't need to provide any parameters. It's all preset for the uh, Coral Kids. Um, you can, oh, a little bit too fast. Um, you can automate the analysis to some extent uh, on, the, on the connector port. So if you have a connector uh, installed for upload, you can define some, some execution rules. So the uploaded files get analyzed um, automatically. If you look at the run itself, um, you get a graphical overview of the pipeline, input files, output files, and the actual coral pipeline and some pre-processing step. It's now all green here, so it means the pipeline has been executed successfully. While the pipeline is running, uh, you can see the progress here in this uh, graphical visualization. On the right, you have some, some technical details about the settings, about the input files, about the output files at the end. Um, you can just click through that. Output files, reports that are generated. After the run, you get an overview of the output files here. 
as already mentioned, uh, it's, it's the BAM files, it's FOSQC files, it's the uh, gene transcript abundance files, and it is a multi-QC report that's generated by the pipeline, summarizing all the statistics, all the uh, metrics that have been generated throughout processing the data. All the files can be viewed online um, or can be downloaded directly to your local infrastructure. And with that, we are actually at the end already. I thank you for your attention and we are open for questions now. Uh, thank you, Andres. Thank you, Martina, for these great talks. We are running a bit over time, but we will definitely have time to answer a couple of questions from our audience. Uh, before we get started with our q and session, I would like to remind how to submit the question. You can type them into the questions box, which is uh, located on the right side of the webinar platform. And I see we have already some questions. All right, uh, our first question is that data upload for Bluebe works uh, using a pre-issued code. What happens if the connection is lost before the upload is complete? Is the code lost or can the upload be repeated? Um, the, the data upload actually does not require any of your uh, credits. So data upload, data download is completely free. Um, the credits are only used for um, analyzing the data for starting a run. And if the run fails for whatever reason, um, the, the uh, token is refunded, so you can use it again. All right, we have uh, another question. I saw somewhere that the Bluebe uh, platform charges a specific price per sample. Can you tell me a little bit uh, about how much that would be and if it is dependent on the kind of analysis you want to perform? Uh, as an academic scientist, uh, I want to use the best technology, but I'm sadly limited by the limited grant support. Okay, so thank you for submitting that question. I think I can answer that one. Um, so for the introductory period, the data analysis pipeline for coal is included when you purchase the coal kit. So we have a promotion until the end of March 2020 that with every coal kit, you also receive the corresponding amount of runs for free on the Bluey platform to use within the next year after having purchased the kit. And after that, um, the runs on the Bluey platform um, are subject to pricing but you can uh, contact us in case you have any problems and need to repeat some experiments. Uh, we will find a way. And I think with the pipeline with Mixquare, you will have the best available technology. All right, uh, the next question. Did I understand correctly that your libraries are stranded? Short answer, yes, absolutely. So above 99% strandedness due to our uh, strand displacement stop and link allegation technology. And can you upload custom genomes for alignment? Um, that's not possible at the moment. Uh, what we can do is uh, to make it available to you. If you have a custom genome sequence, uh, it's not as straightforward, not as easy as just uh, making it available for everyone if you want to have access just for you, uh, but it's possible, we can do. Uh, okay, the next question, how long, uh, how long does the coral data analysis on the Bluepy platform take? For a regular data set that is uh, below one hour, between 30 minutes and 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, dear Martina, how many replicates are needed for reliable analysis? Also, did you come uh, comparison GC, VC, AT read genomes? How well coral performs in case of GC read genomes? So thank you, Petra, for that question. Um, so we haven't specifically analyzed GC versus AT-rich genomes, but we have done coal per, um, library preps on 
many uh, organisms and it works equally well for different organisms, also for bacteria. And we did never observe any GC bias. In terms of replicates, we recommend, I would say around three to four replicates um, to have a really reliable outcome. What also helps for reliable outcome are spike in controls. Um, that you might also want to consider. So we have the surface the RNA uh, spike in controls to spike into your RNA before extraction of library prep. That will also help you to assess the quality of your data. Uh, so how well does this feed perform on low quality fragmented RNA samples? So basically the question whether coral can be used uh, for low quality and uh, fragmented uh, RNA samples. Yeah, so um, we have we have shown that slide with the low input and also for FFPE. So we have analyzed this in detail, um, FFPE material and also heavily fragmented RNA. So coral performs well on those samples and you can use it. Uh, we have some minor protocol modifications for the FFPE material. So if you have that, I have a concern about your RNA control, uh, quality, you can always contact uh, support at lexogen.com and we can provide you with some adapted protocols uh, and support you with your experiment. All right. How long does it take to add annotations of the new species on the Bluebe platform? Depends a little bit on the data quality that is available, but usually we can do this uh, within a few days. Uh, can I start multiple runs in parallel and how many? Uh, it, it is absolutely scalable. Um, there are no limitations. Uh, you can start all the samples that you have and they are processed more or less completely in parallel. Okay, and then we have a question which uh, actually came from somebody who uh, submitted it during the uh, registration and uh, it was uh, could we find alternative splicing from cancer genes from uh, RNA derived from blood and uh, this question can we uh, answer here now or um, I think I can overtake here um, so um, the coral pipeline is um, doing a standard analysis doing de novo or the finding alternative splicing is not part of the pipeline, but as Andreas already mentioned, you can download the BAM files and do then your own analysis uh, based on the BAM files, like doing a string tie analysis on, the, on, on that. Uh, thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Martina and Andreas. We've reached the end of our webinar time and we will wrap up with now. Thank you everyone for attending this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. We will follow up shortly with the link to the recording and direct answers to the questions which were left unanswered. And have a great rest of the day and goodbye.